Hey guys, what is up? You see that area right up there on the on that corner part of that front cap? Right below that running light lens and above it, I have a small little hairline crack. And today I'm going to fix it. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. If I was to ask 10 people how they would approach fixing that problem, I'd get 10 different answers, guaranteed. But this is my coach, and I'm gonna fix it my way, right? My coach, my rules. <laughs> now, as you can see, I'm beginning to sweat already, and I've been waiting for it to get hot like this because this is the exact kind of conditions I need to be making this kind of repair. So a little bit of background. When we bought this coach in 2016, it was used, it was four years old, and I completely did the entire roof. I just happened to uh, release a video on that a few weeks ago. And when I did my roof back then, that hairline crack underneath the lens, it was there. It was about maybe three quarters of an inch long. So I thought, well, I'm going to try just putting on some really good Loctite super glue on there. It was just a hairline crack, and I really wasn't that worried about it. And I thought, you know, this Loctite will probably solve this problem. And it did for the last, I don't know, four or five years. I noticed that I had another hairline crack on the top part of the lens. So I'm like, okay, I need to fix this problem before it gets, you know, into a bad problem. We haven't experienced any kind of leaks or anything like that. But the objective of this fix is to stop that line from continuing to grow and also prevent it from ever leaking. But there's no doubt that this area is either a weak point in the fiberglass or it may be stress related. I decided not to use your typical fiberglass repair kit. That type of fix, when you use those kind of materials, it dries very hard and the front cap the front of that motorhome is constantly uh, twisting and flexing and rolling and I need something that's going to be flexible while we're underway. So those kind of fixes are just not appropriate for this kind of a fix. How about a product that they make from JB Weld or something like that? Those products are, they dry too hard. Now I've owned boats before and I used a product that I'm going to show you here in a minute that I know I'm very confident this product will work. Uh, you can use this underwater, you can use it on top. I mean, this stuff is a permanent bond, but it's flexible when it's totally cured. Now, this is the product that I'm going to be using. This 3M Marine Adhesive Sealant 5200 is an awesome, awesome product. It permanently bonds. This stuff is tough, it's flexible, and it's a polyurethane polymer. That polyurethane is the key, okay? It, it will bond and it'll keep it watertight, but it also, during the heat and the cold and the rolling, it'll expand and contract. It comes in white, it comes in black, it does not come in clear. But because the area that we're working on is kind of an off-white, I'm not worried about the cosmetic effect at all. I'm just not worried about that. So let's go. Okay, well, the first thing I had to do is I had to put on my really good reading glasses because this is going to be very delicate work and I want to really be able to see closely what I'm doing. So here we are looking at the small hairline crack underneath the lens. You can, this is about three quarters of an inch or so and I had scribed a little line right across there ho hoping that that would stop that line from continuing to grow and then I applied the super glue. Well you can see now it's just now starting to go below that line. There is the top line here. This one here is about, I don't know, an inch and a half or whatever. But you can see it's still very, very, it's a very light hairline crack. But it starts from here and goes all the way through and over here. When I remove the lens cap, I think you could safely say that this line continues all the way through here and continues up this way. Now I have never ever had any leaks of any kind on any of these uh, running lights. And these running lights can really be a problem on some coaches. I fortunately have never had any leaks. So I am not going to disturb any of this sealant around here. There's no sense in taking that off and opening up possibly more problems. I'm going to deal from here to here and here to here. 
is comes down and it ends right here. I'm going to go another eighth of an inch to just above this mark right here and I'm going to drill a hole. They call that a drill stop. Some people call it a stop drilling hole. I call it a drill stop. And what you do is you drill a hole one eighth of an inch beyond the end of what you can see in the crack. And then that way, if it continues to grow, it'll grow to that hole and then it'll stop going from there. But I use my razor knife right here and right at the end, about an eighth of an inch below that crack right there, I took my razor knife and I went back and forth like this and I made a little slight, like a pilot hole right here. Because when I put my drill in here, I didn't want to risk that drill walking and, and uh, you know, walking away from the hole. So I gave it a little bit of a starter there and now I'm going to drill the hole. Okay, so there's my hole. And I'll tell you what, I'm really encouraged. Uh, I can see I've gone right, the fiberglass, there's still more material way down inside here. I just went through this first layer right here and that is where that crack is. So that's very encouraging. So if you look here, this was the drill that I drilled the hole with. And that hole did not go all the way through the roof. It went just through that first layer where that crack is. So I'm going to be using my Dremel tool and I have an assorted kit of different bits and heads and stuff like that. And what I'm going to be using this time is what they call a conical head or a conical drill. Well, I decided that I'm going to use this conical drill right here from that hole. I'm going to work up and down that uh, hairline and create a valley and that valley is where we're going to put the 3M bonding material. I could definitely see that this crack was just in this top layer. So there is my hole and I used that conical tip to groove out a valley in there. Then I took a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and just chamfered the edges right here. Because I, when I put on that new material, I want that to go onto a slightly sanded outside area right here. Like I said, I'm going to try to show you step by step. So you see how I put that hole right in the middle. I went an eighth of an inch beyond the, the hairline crack and then drilled down to the first layer. And now I'm going to make the same kind of valley right there. So we've got the bottom one done and we've got the top one done. And I'll tell you, man, I am so encouraged that crack actually was just in this top layer. It, was, it did not go all the way down into the deeper layers. But still, this is the way to fix this and keep that, that crack from continuing to go all the way across the top of the cap. And now I'm going to put some blue paint tape and outline this so I can really confine and put a nice even bead of this 3M material. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so I've got uh, both the bottom and the top all taped around on the outside there. I've sanded the edges of the grooves with 80 grit sandpaper to put a little rough edge on there for the bonding material to kind of go in that valley and then roll up a little bit and have a surface to dry on. So the next thing I'm going to do now is wash these areas out real good with some acetone and my toothbrush. Again, a little quick summary. We've drilled We've ground out that uh, two areas like in a little valley. I've cleaned it with a toothbrush and acetone and now I'm ready to apply this material. Since I've got that area already taped off with my blue tape, I'm just going to go ahead and use this right out of the tube in here and I'm just going to lay it in those two grooved areas and then I'm going to take my razor knife and I'm going to take and push and smooth that out on both the top and on the bottom and get that nice and squeezed in there and nice and smooth. On the cleanup on this, you gotta take paint thinner. I carry it with a, in a little spray bottle right here. So I'll be bringing these up, uh, this up and some paper towels. So now for the final step of putting in the 3M adhesive, I'm gonna martinize that cap. Okay, so I applied the 3M material in that groove and in this groove up here. And then I took my razor blade knife and just scraped this way 
and scraped down this way and squeezed it all down in those cracks. Uh, man, I'll tell you, this is probably gonna be one of the best fiberglass fixes I've ever done, especially something like this. And what's really good about this particular repair is that you won't even see, there will be a little discoloration for the first few months where this new repair is. But back here, you won't even be able to see it because of the lens and it's on the back side of that, uh, the running light. I'm gonna let it sit for probably an hour or two and let it just set up. In a couple hours, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna remove this and then use my finger with just a very little bit of uh, paint thinner and do a final smooth out. Okay, so I actually uh, waited about an hour instead of two hours. I came up and checked it and this area here, it was just starting to tack up and so I was very uh, easily be able to remove the tape and then I put just a little bit of paint thinner on my uh, finger and I did a quick little soft smooth out on the edges. I don't know if you can see this, but this stuff as it cures, it does swell up just a little bit, but that's exactly what I want. And by the time I put that cap on here in two more days, once this is totally cured, all we're gonna see is just this little bit down here. So that fix really turned out awesome. I, I really didn't know what to expect when I drilled that uh, drill stop to, to stop that crack from coming through and continuing. And when I saw that it had two different layers, I thought, oh man, this is perfect. I am just so pleased and I'm very confident that this is gonna stop this nonsense and this thing is good to go. This 3M material, like I say, is a permanent polyurethane bond uh, and it's UV protected. Once this is all dried out in 48 hours, I'm going to come up with a little bit of my rejects and I'm going to cover both of those areas because I took that all off while I was up there working. Put the lens cap back on and then I'm going to keep my eye on it for the next six months or a year and just kind of just make sure that nothing bad, you know, starts to happen. But you see what I'm saying, guys? I mean, we can do these things. You can do these things. 80 to 90 percent of the repairs and upgrades and maintenance items that you need to do to your RV, you can do these things. And our videos show you step by step how to do them. If you haven't been there already, don't forget right up here on our main YouTube channel page, I have a playlist. If you click playlist, it's gonna take you to a library with a multitude of videos just like this. It, it, it just covers a ton of things that you normally have to do to your RV all the time. And also don't forget guys, using our Amazon store down there. In the description text, I have a link that'll take you to our Amazon store. You can get everything you need, all your gear and maintenance items and spare parts and all that there. And even if it isn't in our store, you can still click our store, go find what you need, put it in the cart and check out. It's a great way to say thank you, Martin, for making these videos, teaching us how to take care of our RV. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing is free. Click the button, ring the bell, click all, and you'll be notified the next time I upload my next video. So that's it for now, guys. That's how I fixed my cracked cap. So until next time, this is RV Straight. Stick around.